guys, Dirt here. Today we're taking a look at the Goalie One. Now this is a new tiny PC uh, coming from the maker Gole, Goli, Gola. I've heard it pronounced a whole bunch of different ways. They're from China. I don't think they really care about uh, how you uh, translate it into English. Nonetheless though, this is an all-in-one PC with a tiny little touchscreen. It can run Android and Windows. It's actually pretty cool. So let's hop down and take a look at it down here i've got it set up and i have to say right now it's running android and it runs android really well now there are two versions of this one that has two gig and 32 gigabytes of storage this is the four gig with the 64 gigabytes of storage and it actually runs things very nicely now of course it's a little washed out because i'm recording into the camera so the brightness and everything always gets a little messed up but uh, one of the, there are a couple things I usually like to do to see how uh, tablets are going to work out. And one of those is Minecraft. Uh, Minecraft Pocket Edition on Android. We're going to pull up here and we're just going to play for a little bit. And just to give you an idea of how well it works, i uh, got it set up. And you can see there's a little wolf, uh, wolf cub running around. Um, it actually runs very smoothly. Uh, things don't render too far away. Uh, not a lot of stuttering it's actually pretty smooth very playable as far as this goes for gaming and you have a Windows button we'll get to that when we talk about Windows but in Android it works as a home button to take you back to home that's pretty nice I also like to play Simpsons tapped out uh, that is one that generally takes a long time uh, not only to load and to get all the files, but it's, it's pretty intensive the way it uses the graphics. There's so many things happening on the screen. I've had a lot of Android tablets that just completely break down once you start playing that game. Now having the four gigabytes really helps on this. The two gigabyte version, of course, is not gonna work as well. Uh, but like I said, I've had a ton of tablets where once you put in something like Simpsons tapped out, it just doesn't work very well at all. So I've got it loaded onto the Golay here, the one. We'll just call it the one because uh, I guess that's an easier way to do it. And we're just going to see that it actually works. Uh, it actually works pretty well. It takes a while to load, but once it's loaded, it runs pretty smoothly. And that's actually really nice in a device like this. Also, because it's small, it's easy to carry around. Here, just for comparison's sake, uh, my my G4, um, LG G4, or LG G4 uh, from AT&T, the screen is actually the same size as this device. Um, so you can get an idea for the size of it. Um, and it's got built-in speakers down here. So you can hear that sound. I'm just letting it play through into your ears. But uh, you can see that it actually, if we scroll around here in Simpsons, not a lot of lag, not a lot of choppiness, um, in fact, almost none. And with all the stuff that I have here that's going on, you can see that there's a lot of characters walking around. When I'm tapping on stuff, we're getting a lot of money, a lot of XP. And so that really, um, that really shows you that it's not getting bogged down in all of this stuff, which again is great because Simpsons is one of those games, like I said, for me, it's a good benchmark. I don't run a lot of the 3D Mark apps, uh, you know, whatever, to see what the actual scores and numbers are because those don't mean anything to me. It's real world uh, usage. Plus, I want an excuse to play Simpsons right now. Uh, so there it is. So in Android, uh, it works out really, really well. Um, and I'm kind of surprised by how well it actually works considering what a crazy piece of hardware this thing actually is. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense hardware-wise. And like I said, it's running Windows and Android. I'm gonna switch over to Windows, and then while it's doing that, we're gonna talk a little bit about the shape and the form factor, uh, because it is really weird. So let's hop back down here, and I'll just show you real quick. You can come down as things pull up. You have this button that says OS switch right here. All right, so while Windows is loading here, let me just pick it up off the cradle here a little bit and show you some of the things about it it is in this weird brick type shape um, you can see unlike a phone uh, which is going to be you know thin this thing's actually pretty thick so this isn't the type of thing you're just going to throw into your pocket uh, and forget that it's there but 
The nice thing is though, because of its full size, not only do we have these built-in speakers, they're not the greatest, they're kind of tinny, you kind of heard it uh, a minute ago, but nonetheless, uh, they work and it's nice to have them there. But we also have full-size ports along this thing. So we have this Wi-Fi antenna you can put up uh, if you feel like you need a little extra boost of Wi-Fi, I guess, or you just want to look like you're like, you know, on the walkie-talkie talking to the police, you know. Send in the secret agents now. I, I don't know, maybe that's a bonus for some of you. But you've got um, headphone jack, you've got uh, HDMI, two USBs, we've got our ethernet. Uh, here's our power port for uh, actually charging with the built-in power adapter, or the built-in, the included power adapter. And then we also have a micro USB port, which also works as a charger, which you can use just your regular cell phone charger. So if you're out and about and you wanna charge it real quick, you can plug that in there. We've got another regular USB and we've got a USB 3.0. And then we've got a tiny uh, trans flash card reader, they call it, we just call them micro SD. Um, nonetheless, this thing is a very picky, uh, very few, you probably you have to get a Samsung card and it's got to be certain, uh, probably 16 gigabyte, uh, maybe 32 gigabyte. I've got a 64 gigabyte Samsung. It was kind of flaky. It would read it sometimes, not other times. Uh, so if you're planning on expanding the storage, maybe buying the 32 and getting a card to throw in there, it's not going to work out for the best. I can tell you right now, not what you want. But uh, this as a Windows 10 device works really well also. Now, unlike the Android side, which I would not recommend for, or, unlike the Android side, which the Android side I use for gaming, I would not do a whole lot of gaming on this in Windows 10. Uh, it's just not going to work out for you. Uh, you're not going to like the way it acts uh, very well at all. However, um, using it for Windows tasks, um, hooking it up and using uh, Word or um, Excel or any of those type office things, surfing the internet, doing a little bit of photo manipulation, all that stuff actually works really well. But one thing we'll do is I'll jump in here and I don't want to show you my password, so there we go. All right, so now we'll flip back over to the Windows side, and this is running the latest Windows 10 anniversary update. It doesn't come that way uh, in the box, but you can add it yourself. You just go in and do the updates like normal. Um, this does come running the Chinese version of Windows, but they've already set up an administrator account. They've set all the defaults back to English. You probably don't want to use the one that's been set up by the, uh, the factory. You want to go in, uh, Wipe it, reinstall Windows if you can. If you if you don't have the ability to do that, then go ahead, set up a new administrator account, get rid of theirs, password protect it, whatever. Um, but that's basically what you're looking at when you're you're looking through these types of things. All right. So now that we go back, we can see it's running uh, the anniversary edition. You can see all the different things running on the side. You can see your little uh, reader down here uh, telling you your notifications. Uh, and you, you, it's in tablet mode and it automatically wants to go to tablet mode because you have this tiny screen in order to tap with. But of course, because it is Windows, you can turn off the tablet mode uh, if you know what you're doing, paying attention, there you go. And so now it's like a regular Windows desktop. And it can be a little tricky sometimes uh, hitting the right icon if you want to down in the corner in the touch screen getting the keyboard to work but honestly i have to tell you it's not that bad and even though this thing is pretty tiny and you're touching a tiny screen especially with the windows keyboard or some of the small icons on there windows does a really good job of looking at my fat fingers pressing on the screen and figuring out what tiny little icon i'm actually trying to touch i really don't have many problems using those types of things. Now again, uh, running your basic Windows apps, um, things like PowerPoint and Excel uh, and, and whatever, they all run really well. I'm running uh, the old version, 2010 version of Excel because that's uh, the version I've paid for. Uh, so that's what's on here. Uh, I don't have my glasses on, which makes this a little weird to try to do here. Um, but it loads up everything fine, it works really well. And again, with that HDMI 
uh, video output, you can hook it directly into a monitor uh, and it'll work. You can hook up a keyboard, you can hook up a mouse, and everything works. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pause this video, I'm going to plug everything in, and then we're going to come back and we're going to see it actually running uh, up on a big screen and you can get an idea of how well it actually works. Okay, so now we've got it set up. Let's take a look at what it looks like over here. You can see here is the actual box that's set up and I've got an HDMI cable attached to the back here running to the monitor. So this is the actual machine here on the screen. And I don't know how well this is gonna show. Once again, filming a screen through the camera uh, as opposed to doing like an actual capture. Uh, but just so you can get an idea, we'll throw this up. Gaming, like I said, is not as good on something like this as opposed to doing it on the Android side. And that's just part of, you know, Windows in general. Windows needs a lot more resources than a lot of the other stuff. Uh, but just to throw this up there so you can look at it and get an idea. When I do something like Minecraft on here... Uh, generally, I have to turn down a lot of the graphics. Uh, it doesn't look as nice. You can get it to be kind of smooth uh, just through the nature of having, uh, you know, all of the special type of shading turned off, the fancy graphics, uh, the draw distance not being that huge. You can kind of see that it's it, it, it's probably not as nice as it would be on a traditional. Uh, uh, type of environment so uh, it works but it's not the greatest thing in the world it's not sliced bread uh, when it comes to doing something like gaming it's just not fantastic but if I'm doing other stuff uh, you know like I do like I said I take this to work and I set it up and I do work stuff uh, open up Excel and I start pulling up all of the lists for comics that are coming out this week and working on that stuff I have our list of subscribers uh, for different books so I can pull that up and I can start going through the lists and I can take stuff. Uh, oh, there's an update. Okay, well thanks. Simple note, we'll get to that later. But if I go in and I start pulling up lists of comics and working with this and putting together our eBay listings and our inventory, um, everything works really well. Uh, this works really well as a business class type machine. Um, you're not going to be sitting here playing. A lot of super high intense quality games on it but you can see that the display is actually very large uh, let me see if I can get the uh, let's see what I want display settings we're gonna pull this up here this is actually running on this top screen uh, let's see of course it doesn't tell you right here here it is uh, 1920 by 1080 is what it's putting output on the monitor whereas the actual screen itself is 1280 by 720 so the touch screen is kind of small 1280 by 720 that may be part of what helps it uh, when it's an android because it's not as high uh, power um, and again it, it's fine when you're doing stuff in the windows side um, that's not a lot of uh, uh, detail you don't need a lot of processing power um, but it, again it works good for business so going back to the concept of this being a kind of random weird hardware machine um, I'm just gonna unplug this real quick and pull it back up because as this little box that you carry around it is an amazingly weird piece of hardware I don't know how many situations you're gonna be in where you need to take your work PC and bring it home uh, and do other stuff on it. I mean, it's just, like I said, the touchscreen works fine. I'm not having any problems uh, touching little things on here that I'm supposed to. Uh, everything, you know, is, is playing out no problem uh, as far as the touchscreen goes. I just don't know when you're going to need that. When do you need a complete Windows PC that's this small that you can carry with you? Now, there are some situations where it's nice. If I was a uh, commuter, if I worked in an office and it took me, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes on the train every night to get home, uh, and I was able to use my own PC at work, then this would be a great thing to take to work, to plug in, to do your work. When you get done, you unplug it, 
you can still play some games while you're on the subway, whatever. You can um, uh, play some Minecraft. You can you know, switch over to Android and play whatever it is you want to play. And then when you get home, you've got an entertainment PC that you can plug in. You can run Netflix. You can run Kodi on it. You can run you know, whatever you want to run in order to get the video to your TV screen. Um, and then you can also plug it in and have a PC at home. So if you're looking at one of those situations, maybe where you spend a lot of time out of the house, um, you know, maybe because of your commute, um, maybe you, you own your own business. And so you want something when you're at the office, but then be able to take it home and still have all your files and everything. It's actually great for that. Um, I like it because it's powerful enough as a PC. Uh, it's pow it's super powerful as an Android device, even though it's, it's bulky and it's big. I find that a lot of times when I want to play Simpsons Tapped Out, I play it on here um, because really my two four gigabyte devices uh, that run Android, uh, it's, it's this is device one and my second device is uh, an 11 inch tablet. So I'm either going really huge or really small. And this is just a little easier to carry around. It does have a built-in battery. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. When it comes in the box, it comes with the charger and also comes with uh, an HDMI cable. Uh, so that's nice. Hook it up to your TV, hook it up to a monitor, whatever you're going to do with it. Um, but the battery life on this is not great. Uh, in fact, it's pretty terrible a lot of times. Um, maybe four hours um, on the window side when you're doing some, uh, some heavier tasks, uh, especially surfing the internet if you're using Chrome. Um, you've got a couple tabs open because of the way Chrome is sandboxed. It just eats up the memory. Everything runs down. Um, playing it on here, playing something like Simpsons, uh, you know, again, uses a lot of power. Um, it, it's just going to eat up your battery really super fast. Now, one thing it, that I like to do is, is to watch Comixology. If I hook this to the TV, I actually have a wireless trackball. I open up Comixology, output to the TV, I'm on the treadmill, I can walk on the treadmill, I can you know, just press the button in my hand and it'll flip to the next panel because of the Comixology easy reading. That works out really well. Uh, so then I can also carry it with me, I can read, I can take it up there, I can read, uh, you know, whatever. It works really nice for what it does. Again, I just don't know how many situations you're gonna find that you actually need a machine like this. Now, here's the nice thing though, buying this machine with the four gigs of RAM and the 64 gigabyte internals, uh, it's only gonna cost you like $130. And you can find them, I think on Gearbest and AliExpress um, and places like that. Uh, you're gonna be able to import one of these from China. Um, and, and if you have a need for a device like this or you just want a new gadget to play with, it's actually pretty good and pretty nice. But the weird form factor is gonna be an issue. You can't just throw it in your pocket and forget that you have it. Um, you also need a, some kind of case, something to put it in because the screen right here, um, it's just kind of a plastic overlay and the screen that you're actually touching is inset. That's going to throw people off. There's a couple millimeters of uh, space in between the covering and the screen on the inside. So that may throw you off. Um, there's no stylus support. Um, you're not going to want to grab, um, you know, one, they have those uh, styluses where there's the Mako styluses that have like the little disc on the end um, that you're going to be plugging into. Uh, you, you don't want to use one of those because those will scratch this up because it is just kind of a cheap plastic cover. Um, it's Again, I, I don't know when you're going to use all of these options. Um, there are a lot of situations that it's not the best unit you're, you're going to have, but there are situations where it is going to work out really well. And I think if you have a need for a device that you can play around with, uh, that you can use in multiple locations, you can use for multiple tasks, um, then it actually, it's actually really nice. And like I said, a lot of times I find myself just defaulting to using it because A, it's handy, uh, B, it runs pretty well, um, and C, I already have it, so why not use it? I guess is the thing that comes uh, to my mind a lot of times. But again, I, I'm, I'm not going to be doing a lot of heavy editing on the Windows side. I'm not going to be doing a lot of uh, heavy gaming on Windows or Android. Um, but when I'm doing some of the gaming that I want to do, oh, I just got a, a coupon from Papa John's. Thanks, Papa John's. Um, 
if you're going to be doing some some just casual gaming on the Android side, doing some comiXology, you want to output it to a TV. TV output works in Android and Windows. It works well. It's not expensive, 130 bucks. If you want the cheaper version, it's 99 bucks, so it's no big deal. Um, but really, overall, uh, it's it's just a fun little thing to play with. I enjoy playing with it, and if you're looking for something like that, there you go. So anyway, guys, I've talked way too long. This video is a lot longer than I ever wanted it to be. I have a tendency to babble when I do this stuff. But again, fun device. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Dirt gummy.